Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Since we started checking out all these M.2 drives a few months ago, all the drive manufacturers have started reaching out to us and sending us drives to test and compare. This time it's Kingston 10 and they sent us their brand new KC2500 NVMe M.2 drive to check out. And as usual, we'll put this drive up against 11 other drives to see how this new drive from Kingston actually stacks up. The Kingston KC2500 M.2 SSD is Kingston's answer at creating a security focus drive for people who want to put secure drives in their workstations and their gaming PCs and anything where security really, really matters. Now, I gotta admit, this drive is definitely not for everyone, but it does have its place in the market. The one terabyte KC2500 has random read and write performance of around 375K to 300K IOPS. The drive is also fully PCIe Gen 3 compatible and it should work on PCIe Gen 4 slots as well. We also tested it with those slots as well and it worked perfectly. And it comes with a five year limited warranty and should give you around 2 million hours of use before any type of failure. It's around 228 years in normal counting. Anyway, on the controller side, it uses the Silicon Motion SM2262EN controller. It's a pretty common controller and it's fully NVMe 1.3 certified. It's used on other drives like the ADATA SX8200 Pro, the HP EX920 and the Transcend 220S as well. And you can check out our 220S video up there if you want to see what we said about it. Now, there's lots of info on this controller out there. It's a pretty common controller, but if you're interested to know more about these controllers, I'll put some like resources down in the description if you want to check that stuff out. Now, the drive also has a few other tricks up its sleeve as well. The drive uses Kingston's own 96 layer 3D TLC NAND flash, and it's really geared towards power users. Not only that, this driver, also self-encrypts all its data and uses AES XTS 256-bit encryption with TCG Opal 2.0 and Microsoft eDrive. Now, this drive is uh, really, really focused at securing data on your drive. And anyway, let's get into some testing. As usual, we put 12 drives that we've got available and these are all M.2 drives and we put them through a crazy amount of testing. And the way we usually test this is we fill these drives with 50% capacity and then we run five different types of tests. We run those tests 20 times and we calculate the average speed of all of those 20 tests conducted. So there's a there's, there's a lot of testing that happens and we run a one gig test, a four gig test, a 16 gig test, and a 32 gig test, as well as a 64 gig test on basically every drive that we ever get to give all the results from every single test we do a bit of context. Now, all of these drives tested are drives that we physically have on hand. And if I didn't test something, it just means that I don't have one. So don't ask why we didn't test a certain drive. It literally means that we don't have one. Anyway, strap yourself in. There's a lot of stuff to unpack. I'm sorry in advance, not really, but anyway, sit tight. I'm gonna have a look at the results from this drive. There's a lot of variation in all these drives and they come in at really different price points for different use cases. And I think this is, again, a pretty good sample of drives that you might actually consider buying if you're going out there and looking to buy yourself a new NVMe drive, whether you're building a new PC or you're upgrading. And this shows data from the entry level all the way up to the high end. And there's also like other things you need to consider when you're looking at buying drives like this, things like all of the different types of cache, uh, physical controllers, like we mentioned earlier in the video. Uh, all of these things can be different from drive to drive. And also all of this info can be found with a quick Google search. We've also noticed that if you're using the same model of drive with a different revision controller, that can affect the performance because even with the 2262EN, there's different revisions. So it might differ over time of the drives being released. And there's also other things to consider like capacity with most of the higher capacity drives, they will actually perform better. There's also physical differences between PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4 and 
physical drive pulls and there's just a lot of things that can vary in this and basically what we're doing is providing you with all this information and data that we have available from the testing that we do here on the channel and we test all of our drives on the exact same test bench to keep everything consistent and as controlled as possible and as usual just take everything that you're seeing in this video with a huge giant grain of salt because not everything's perfect, but these are the numbers that we actually found to have got with these tests. After running all these tests, it's pretty clear that the KC2500 isn't the fastest drive and it's not really supposed to be. It's really designed to be ultra secure and you're sacrificing a little bit of that speed for encryption. Now, for some, that can be important and sometimes that's more important than read and write performance. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna say it again, it's completely up to you. I'm just giving you the facts and the numbers that we got from testing. Now, the next thing I was curious about was to see if this drive had any performance impact without using a heatsink. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, it basically made no difference at all. There is no impact with using a heatsink whatsoever. So what do I think of the KC2500? Is it worth the money? Well, as usual, it's pretty subjective depending on your use case. If you need the raw read and write performance of a high-end drive, i probably say no. There are other options like the ADATA SX8200 Pro that compete in speed and are a bit cheaper. Even both of these drives, they use the same controller, but the additional features like self-encryption, I don't know, the security might be a lot more important to you than just that raw performance. So again, I would say choosing this drive is an interesting choice, but it's completely up to you. And if we compare it to like the Seagate FireQ to 510 and the SN750 from WD in Australian dollars, because that's my local currency, this drive is around 30 bucks cheaper than the SN750 and the FireQ to 510. But what does that even mean to you? Well, it means you can save money and get a drive that performs pretty close to that. And $30 in Australian dollars, that's quite a bit for an M.2 drive. So I think the Kingston KC2500 in terms of value, if you're looking for something that's really security focused, uh, I would say it would be a drive to consider, but it's really hard to say if you actually need a drive like this. Uh, people actually take security and that kind of stuff for granted. And it is important for some applications like finance applications and stuff like that. And people just don't think about it. And to be honest, if I had to pick something purely based on the price bracket of, let's say, 270 Australian dollars to 370 AUD, which again is my local currency, I would pick either this 
or the WD Black SN750. But again, it's hard to argue with Kingston's record of flash memory because they've been doing it for such a long time. And at the end of the day, I don't love this drive. I, I don't hate it, but having a drive that can self-encrypt does give you peace of mind. Personally, it doesn't really matter to me. I could go either way, but if it's important to you, I reckon the ball's in your court. It's completely up to you. So if you're interested in grabbing one of these, well, the one terabyte version at least, it's going for around 225 US dollars or around 289 Australian dollars at the time of filming this video. I think that's a pretty decent price for a drive that performs like this. Again, it is considerably cheaper than some of the other drives that perform like similar to this. So yeah, maybe it could be up to you, whatever. It's, it's up to you, I just give you the data. Anyway, let me know what you think of this drive. Let me know what you're using at the moment. Let me know if you personally think drive encryption and like self encryption is super important to you. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on it. For me personally, it's not a big deal. Uh, it might be to you, maybe I should think of it, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's completely up to you. And again, I can't believe I have to say this with all these videos. This video is not sponsored by Kingston. They literally just sent us a drive. I could have just not used this drive and used it as a doorstop. So <laughs> yeah, uh, the reason why I really wanted to check this drive out is uh, self-encryption. I just wanted to see what type of overhead there was with self-encryption and it's not, it's negligible basically. But yeah, I just wanted to test this drive and test every drive that we get through because I'm interested in this stuff and storage is kind of my thing. Anyway. Uh, I, I just want to say this again, we kind of do this with our monitor videos as well. Like I, I try not to bombard you with too much technical data. I, I just wanted to make it easy as possible for you guys. I want to make it to break it down. I want to make it just nice to digest and some things just don't make sense to a lot of people and that's what I'm here for, just to make it a little bit easier for you to understand. And anyways, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you're not doing, tell us what you hated about it, hit that dislike button twice, get early access to videos like this over on Floatplane and also hit the join button if you want to support the channel. If you like the music, I make all the music, it's available on Patreon. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your winning gear seekers, you peak, we seek. Yeah, and really let me know if you guys think security with NVMe drives is important to you. I want to know what you think about security. It's nothing to do with me. It's whatever you guys think about it. Thanks for watching.